Hi everyone, I'm Brian Demers from Okta, and today I'm gonna to show you five tools to help improve your Java code. This video is based on a blog post I wrote, so if you'd rather read instead of watch, I'll have the link to that and the code in the description below. Let's get started. Number one, add test coverage with Jococo. Jococo is my favorite Java coverage tool. It works a little different than some of the others out there. Um, so Jococo works with a Java agent. Uh, so you can attach it to basically any Java process. So what I've done today is I've created a little Java project and I'll be using Apache Maven because I'm a Maven fan, but all of these tools work at Gradle as well. Um, so to add Jococo to your project, it's just a plugin. So if I create the plugins definitions here, and then I've saved a little time, so you don't have to watch me type this whole thing, and I've added the plugin block already. So in this example, I have three executions for this plugin. So the first one is really all you need, and that tells Jococo to configure um, the Surefire test runner to add Jococo automatically. So that is all you need to do. If you have integration tests, uh, which we all do, right? You have a similar block uh, in Maven. Integration tests are, are run using failsafe instead of Surefire. So there's a there's minor differences, but you know essentially it's the same process. And the final execution I ha I have here is to generate an HTML report. So this could go in basically any phase, um, but for this example, I'm going to be using the verify phase the whole time just to keep things simple. So that's all I need to do. And if I run this example, just Maven verify. Takes a second. And there we go. So I can open the report, which is in target site Jococo index. And here we go. So you can see this project has a couple tests. It's not great, uh, but we can drill right down into this. So there's a hotspot right here, this file utility class, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, and we have some utility class, which has decent coverage, but we're missing something here. So we can drill right in and see it's this add method. And we can see one of these branches is missing coverage. So you could go out of test uh, and improve that. Number two, static analysis with PMD. PMD doesn't actually stand for anything, but it's a really great tool to help you find uh, some common problems like unused variables, uh, imports, empty statements. So um, to add PMD to a project, again, I've saved a little time here. If I can remember how to type PMD. So it's worth noting that the PMD plugin is one of the official plugins that's supported by the Apache Maven team. So I'll, in this plugin, I have one execution and I'm just gonna call check and that'll do everything for me. So once again, if I run Maven verify and run through this project, we're gonna start to see that I wrote some pretty terrible code. Here we go, so we have three PMD violations. Um, so PMD by default outputs to an XML file so we can crack that thing open. If I can find it, there we go, PMD XML. So you can see that in this class file utility, I have some unused imports, an empty statement, and an unused private method. So if we head over there, you can see that. So here we go, Is it unused import, an empty statement, and this private method isn't actually used anywhere. You may notice some other problems with this class, but we'll get to that in a minute. Number three, bytecode analysis with spot bugs and find security bugs. So if you remember, this class has a few problems and we're gonna detect those right now. So we jump back to our palm. I'm gonna add a plugin for spot bugs. Now spot bugs is a great little nifty plugin that will do bytecode analysis to detect 
similar types of problems as PMD, but you'll see it's able to detect um, significant issues here. So once again, I have a template to add spot bugs and just this plugin block. And I've added the find security bugs plugin within a plugin. So a plugin within a plugin. Now this one will detect security related issues. So weak hashes, untrusted imports and other common issues. And I'm basically gonna fail on any type of error we see. So the threshold is low, the effort is max and fail on error is true. And we have one execution, which I'm gonna just run the check goal. So once again, if I run Maven verify, we're gonna see some other terrible, terrible issues with this code I wrote. And these will output right into the console. Here we go, four bugs. So right here we have um, default encoding issue. We have uh, a missing try catch block, and we have uh, an uncall, uh, and we have an unused private method. So if I jump back to this code, you can point that out. All right, so a couple of these can be solved with using. Uh, a try with resources block or even your the typical try catch and then close the, the stream. And we're also not setting an encoding here. So typically UTF-8. So I'll leave this exercise up to you to how to clean up this code. Number four, ensure backwards compatibility with Java API compare. This is a great little tool I've been using for the past few years and it will detect um, binary source and sember compatibility issues. So typically, most of the time I care about binary and sember compatibility. So I'm gonna focus on that. So this also has a Maven plugin. And I've added this block here. So simple usage, you define the plugin, and then you point to the old jar file. So in this case, I'm gonna use a Maven dependency. And almost always your group ID and your artifact ID will be the same because you're just changing versions. And then you'll set the version to some previous version. Now this could be 1.0, whatever you, you define. The type is a jar, and I have some parameters here. So I only want to report on modified methods. I wanna break the build if anything changes. And same thing with Semver. Any, I'm gonna break the build on any Semver related changes. However, um, the Java Java compatibility is, is a little little tricky. For example, adding new default methods to a Java interface is technically a breaking change. Most of us will allow this, and that's a great way to, to move your APIs forward. So you can add a post analysis script, and I will create one right now. And once again, just to save time, I have a template I can use to spit out all the code so you don't have to watch me type. So this looks a little funny, it's groovy. There's a lot of other um, variables already in, in the context here. Um, for the most part, all this is doing is it's iterating through all of the classes. Anything that is changed, so not unchanged, it's gonna get all of those methods and we're going to remove any new default methods. And that way we've just excluded all of them. Number five, code reviews. Don't skip them. All of these previous tools can be added to your IDE, uh, but adding them to your build ensures they get run. It also helps make your code reviews more effective by automating all of this stuff out of them. No longer will you be asked, is there a test for this, right? All of that stuff can be automatically fed into your code review. That way the human element can really shine through. The best part about code reviews is it's a chance to share knowledge between the reviewer and the reviewee. And you can get down to all the subjective topics like does this code make sense? Is it clear? Those things, the, the, those things a, a computer can't determine for you. Bonus round, scan your dependencies for vulnerabilities.
Your libraries and applications contain dozens, if not more, direct and indirect dependencies. You need to make sure they don't contain vulnerabilities. Luckily, there are a few great options around for that. I've been using the OWASP dependency check tool for years, and it's been great. The only problem is there's a high rate of false positives. So these need to be managed with an excludes file. So you may end up with a few commits to your repository that are just managing this file. Next up, there's DependentBot. So if anyone's using GitHub on a public repo, you've probably already seen DependentBot. May have sent you pull requests automatically. Um, so that's another great choice. I've had some sort of mixed results with Maven multi-module projects in the past, but I'm sure that's getting better. There are commercial options too. Sneak.io will scan your dependencies and even detect additional security issues that are not in the official NIST vulnerability database. That's it. I hope you can use these tools to help improve your code. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. You don't want to miss our future videos. Thanks for watching.